Ladies and gentlemen, this is Mickey Clayton, the coach. The Clapton Athletic Show, third season. And we kind of adjusted the schedule of, a little bit to get the coach of the cross, highly successful cross-country team, men and women, Coach Malcolm Watson. And we needed to celebrate his team and what they've done. And he was willing to adjust the schedule a little bit to get him on here early. So he could talk about it. Welcome, Coach, and congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate, appreciate what you're doing to promote our program. Appreciate what you're doing to promote our athletic department. And, um, and um, I, I know you're doing a good job. So I had no choice but to make that adjustment so we can talk. Man, thank you. I appreciate that. Coach, when I, I started seeing the information come out, I was so proud of, of what you were able to accomplish not just with the men's team, but with the men and women's team. Coach, you you were confident going in, but coach, were you expecting what you got? Well, um, yeah, yes. Um, um, I think, you know, any any as long as we progress and long as we keep building, um, you know, we we always go back and measure where we was at last year and how we can get better. And I think that's what we're doing. You know, we making we making um some small progress. And I think for the women, it was a big progress for them, um, even though, you know, I was expected the, that that third place trophy. But, you know, things happen. And, you know, it's not it's never an excuse when 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 you out there in the battlefield and things happen because things happen on both sides. So, you know, for the women to do what they did, I think that was great. Um, it shows that they're improving and um, and we we look we look forward to being better. Coach, I'm going to go back and correct you. You said small progress. Coach, it, this has not been a small <laughs> baby step leap that your program's made. Coach, that, that is the best they, they've ever done. Coach, so I appreciate the modesty, but come on, <laughs> Coach. You, 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 it's all right to have your heart beating a little fast with the success you've had, Coach. Yeah, I mean, I understand that, you know, but, you know, um, um, like, I, you know, we always preach about, you know, the expectations that we have for the program. And uh, we never want to fall short, even though things happen. But, you know, we're going to keep growing, like I said, and and, and the results going to keep getting better. Okay, well, let, let's let's emphasize a little bit the women's team. Coach, let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about that. And you, you had a senior that really did exceptionally well and has had a really good career for you in cross country. Yes, um, Maddie, Maddie, she stepped up and, you know, she's the leader of those cross country girls. Um, now, um, then I had Nia, you know, she's been playing with injury all season. If you look at the results, she hadn't ran for about a month. Um, she's been injured on and off. And I know it's a transition for her coming from high school, doing some of the things that she was used to and now having to, um, to grow and, and, and step up and do it on another, on a higher level. And then um, I had another young lady that, that that couldn't run this season. She's been out the whole season. So, you know, like I said, I think we we are a lot better on paper than we than we showed. But, you know, I'll take the victory. I'll take the small victory. There you go again, using that that <laughs> that, that, that word, that coach. And so the freshman Nia was hurt a lot of the season for you. Yeah, she was she was uh, she was playing with some leg injury, so I kept her off out of the um, loop for for about a month. And she came back a, a week before cross country. She still was our second runner, um, second best runner. And then um, if you look at Jazz, um, who was our third third runner on the women's side, she really really um, ran a big time personal best, probably over two minutes over the course of the season. So she really stepped up for us. And you're talking about a young lady who has never done cross country that came in and, and she didn't believe it, but, you know, throughout the training process, you know, she humbly accepted it and she, she was able to show progress, especially at the, um, at the championship. Uh, she was a little nervous, but she came through. Well, coach, I got a question. How do you sit out a month like Nia did and then come back in a week? and be able to do that coach. She must really be a special athlete. Yeah, and I tell her every day, I say she is a special athlete. And and if she stay healthy, she's gonna do some great things and she's gonna make a lot of history here at Claflin University because she is a special young lady. And, um, you know, it's, it's a diamond in the rough. And when you have one of those, I have to make sure that the health is, is the first and uh, the most important thing for me. So, 
you know, I had to, you know, modify her training and figure out some other ways that she can still stay conditioned and at least enough to run through the season and then get her ready for indoors and outdoors. Wow, Coach, that, that that's a, a story to tell there. And Jasmine never ran cross country at all. No, she came in last year and she was supposed to um, assist us, but she got hurt. Um, when she came in, I think she had like a knee injury over the summer. Um, she came in, she couldn't run. So this was our first year ever running cross country. Um, um, I trained her last year. She did some middle distance indoor. And um, like I said, at the championship, she really stepped up. Even the two young ladies that um, that was our number four and five, they stepped up. Um, they ran personal best. So for the for the women, that was a big victory for them when we talked about it. And they understand the process. And going forward, I think they understand the, the, what they need to do to be better at, at doing um, during the season. Yes, because you had your highest uh, finish ever in the CIAA. And the last time you finished like this, it was 2015 when you were in a member of the SIAC. So this this is quite an accomplishment, ladies and gentlemen. Don't let uh, Coach Malcolm Watts' modesty fool you. <laughs> Coach, let's go back and, and let's talk about the person that you're going to really miss, and that's your senior, Coach. Uh, let's talk about how she set the example for the younger girls, or younger young ladies on your cross country team? Well, Maddie is Maddie is a silent leader. Okay. She's gonna show up. She's gonna show up on time. And you know, she she's gonna motivate the girls to do what they need to do. And and she's she'll let them know, listen, if you guys stay close to me and then we can run together. Um, because that's what it's about. Because uh as we discussed going in, you know. Each and every one of us have a, have a task, and um, whatever you do affect the entire team, and that's how cross country works, and that's how most sports work. But in cross country specifically, whatever you do is um, it, it definitely affect the entire team. Um, so we talked about that a lot, and so for those girls to come through and and knowing that she's a senior and they want to make sure that she go out um, um, with with her best finish ever was important to them. Okay, okay, okay. Well, well, Coach, um, we're going to move a little bit to your men's team. I like doing the women first. But the men had an excellent season, and you you were able to recruit somebody, uh, a freshman, who really shined a bright light uh, for you on that cross-country team. Yes, uh, Grayson has been my best uh, cross-country runner all year. As um, a freshman. As a freshman, yes, as a freshman. Really impressive. And um, um, so he's been the best runner all year. And he's been the best, um, um, actually, and even in practice, he execute, you know, every day he come to practice with that mindset of winning. You know, his thing was he wanted to win, you know, and, and as a freshman, he wanted to win. So he came in with that mindset and he stuck to it. And, and you know, the senior guys on the team, they continue to push him that way because they know he's going to be special. Wow, Coach, that, he hasn't said it. But this was the, the third place finish was the highest since Claflin's men team has been in the NCAA since 2014. That's the highest finish in cross country in 20 years. Congratulations, Coach. Well, we appreciate we appreciate you and all the support that you've given us. And um, but you know, it's 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 moving up, moving forward. You know, we we know what we have to do to get better, and and the guys know. And I think they buying into it. I think this this was the first time we had all the, all the cross country guys, all six cross country guys run ran um, under thirty minutes. Mm. Yeah, coach, you have you only losing one. I think that's your grad student, uh, Damari Little or something. Yeah, we losing two off of that uh, cross country team. Uh, we losing Damari Little, and we losing Zion Murray. So I'm working to replace them to make sure that we we consistently stay at the top of the um, of, um consistently stay on the podium that is uh zion murray has been a a heck of an athlete for you over the years coach we we are constantly talking about uh the successes that he's had in your track program oh yeah yeah zion um last year he had a good season this year we look forward to being better um that we were last year His, you know we have a goal set on ncaa so um, indoors and outdoors. So 
you know, he's been working and 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 you know, we that's that's our goal. Well, coach, talk about those two juniors you had that did well, Reginald Gore and was it Jakari Sanders? Yeah, um, I'll tell you what, Reggie is a special athlete. He just doesn't know it. Um, Reggie is 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 he is one of the better middle distance runners in the conference. He just doesn't know it. And I, I tell him all the time, uh, we have to perform to our threshold. And, and you know, I look at him as underperforming. <laughs> so that tells you how special he is. And, um, and and we talked about that a lot. You know, I talked to him about that a lot. And, you know, he, he ran well all season. He opened up the season with a personal best. And all season, he's been better and better and better. So hopefully that transfer um to our indoor season and that's what we're working on but reggie is special and you know jakara as he's the master of consistency i know consistently what he's going to give me on race day he's going to be there and, and i can count on him to be consistent with his performance well coach explain to me again how do you do personal best at the first meet as a veteran coach that that's a heck of an accomplishment that comes come out the gates with that well, when we started training, you know, we sat down and, I, you know, I was able to explain to him, like, some of the things that, that you were doing wrong, some of the things, some of the areas you need to improve. And, um, you know, he, he's been working on it consistently. So, you know, when you work on something, the results is going to show as long as you stay consistent with it. And that's what's happening with him. And um, now it's time to transfer that to our next season to make sure that he stay consistent or he achieve, you know, his goals. Uh, coach, you came in last year at what what point in the season? Hadn't school started already when you came in? Yeah, I came in the middle of September. We came in mid September, so you know I I, I I just had to put my feet on the ground and start running. <laughs> I I didn't have that transition. <laughs> so so this year you see the difference and you see the results with with me being here for the for the entire season. Um, it showed it's, it was a little different. So you saw the results, but we hope to build on that, like I said, and we're going to continue to do that. And you went exactly where I was trying to go, Coach Malcolm Watts being psychic. You know, that's what I was going to talk about, a little bit of the difference with you coming in and knowing what you were dealing with, having them the whole year. You know, we did, we do see the difference. What? How did you approach it different? Um, you know, when, when, when something is new, it's always a little anxiety, right? You always have a little anxiety. So I think with the students – even though they bought into what I was what I was selling, they, they they still had that anxiety and something questioning in the back of their head. But after the season last year and the success we had, you know, all the guys now is on board, and and I don't have to do much at this point because the guys take leadership and they understand what the process is. They understand the journey and they understand um, all of us have the same destination and they understand the road we have to take to get there. And I think once 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 I got them to understand that it becomes a little easier. So, you know, when, when Maury came into the program, he fit right into the culture of what we had going on. Um, so the, the culture that we have is all the students know that I'm going to hold them accountable for what they do. So they hold each other accountable. So for me, my job becomes a little light and a little easier. Okay. Okay. Now, how do you transition heading into the outdoor season? Does your, your cross country does help prepare you, uh, not for the outdoor, for the indoor season. W what happens in your training now, or, or what do you do to help, you know, modify them for that that next season? Well, now we spend more a little more time on the track, you know, working on executing our race plan. You know, we all have a race plan, and they know what the race plan is. So I explained that to them, and we making that transition from cross country, you know, it helped us build our endurance so to, to, to transition to the track indoor. So now with the indoor season approaching, I think we're in great position um, to be better than we were last year. I'll be honest with you. We, we are a lot better than we were last year indoors, and, and we're going to show it on the track. Coach, you had a pretty successful finish in indoor last year. Well, we're going to be even more successful this year. Okay. You confident where your women's uh, track team is now? Because you 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 oh, said definitely. on this show that you were gonna be better. So oh, I'm, definitely. I'm definitely confident with with the women and where they are and where they, and where we grow in and where we're gonna be indoors. Uh, we're gonna be competitive. Uh, just watch the results and you'll see we're gonna be competitive and and we're gonna hey, listen. The the ones on top, we coming. <laughs> okay. <They're> coming. <laughs> 
how is how have you been uh, received on campus with the finish that you had? You know, I think um, um, I'm grateful to have an administration that really supports what I'm doing, and um, so it's it's well received. And you know, and people around campus they see the results. I'm getting a lot of students that's interested in running track now. Um, too many students, right? Um, but it's a good thing. It's always a great thing when you have, you know, an influx of students who, who, who's becoming more interested in, and, you know, for us around here, the, the students know when they walk, they walk with their head up and they understand what we're, we're um, what's stacked against us and the people that's, and everybody that's supporting us. Okay. Now we had the fourth place and third place finish with your, your men and women's cross country team. Mm -hmm. And we're very proud of that accomplishment, but coach, I know, that you're not satisfied, that you, you have your eyes set on more. So what are you going to do to try to prepare even more to be better to go after that championship next year? Well, um, just the first thing I have to do is replace the, the pieces that's leaving, right? I have some good pieces um, that's leaving, um, two on the men's side and one on the women's side. So um, I have some young ladies that I'm recruiting now that's, that's um, that, you know, once I get them on board, then we'll be fine. I think we'll be better than we were this year. And that's that's my goal. That's always my goal, right? Um, just like I said, look back at how we did this year and then going forward, where can we get better? And so I sit and I evaluate that. And um, and if it's, if it's in me, we're going to get better. Coach, what do you use during this recruitment process to convince the parents and the students to entrust their track student athletes in your care at Clapper? Well, you know, I'll, tell, I'll be honest with you, Mickey, the, the student athletes are my biggest recruiting um, asset, right? They explain to the students, like when, when, when students come on board on a visit, you know, I, I let them sit down and talk to the students because, you know, they're peers and, and they can get more from talking to their peers about the culture that we have and the, the winning attitude and the training and the philosophy that we have. And... So for me, my job becomes easier when I have leaders on this team that can sit down and explain to people why they should choose Claflin over any other university. Okay, Coach, how do you how do you get notified about potential student athletes? Um, I I do a lot of research. I look at the I go to some of the meets, look at some of the results, and um, and then I you know I get in contact with some of the coaches. Last year, I did a lot of networking with some of the coaches in South Carolina, because, you know, I, I really want to recruit close to home so parents can see the development and the process that, that's taking place um, um, when, when they child leave and, and they come to Claflin. And they can see the growth, not just academically, but athletically. And they and, and they send in their, their sons or daughters or niece, nephew, grandkids to a place where they know um, they can grow. Right. And they're going to be taught some of the th same um, things that they're taught at home. And, and, and we're going to make sure that we stay consistent in, in the development of their, of their child. Um, so, you know, parents know that they can entrust us um, to teach their, their son, daughters, nephew, niece, uh, grandkids what they're teaching them at home. We're just an extension of the family. So the, the family atmosphere we have here, we want to make sure parents understand that it's an extension of what you're teaching your kids. Oh, that's an excellent point. And I think with the outstanding tradition of Claflin University, both academically and athletically, that when you recruit out of South Carolina, everybody already knows about Claflin. Right, right. And 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 I want I want them to know that, you know, you you come into Claflin University where you're gonna get a great education and you're gonna enjoy um, the sport of track and field because winning is always enjoyable. <laughs> he said winning is always enjoyable. <laughs> so, so, Coach, when do you get started um, with your men, I mean, with your uh, indoor season? Our indoor season starts on December the 6th. We're going up to Liberty and um, and uh, we're going to take, you know, the men and women team up to Liberty and we're going to showcase our talent and see um, where we stand. So once we get started, you know, the, the bus is going to keep on rolling um, through the CIAA and the NCAA. Okay. And when do you, do you, ever, do you, do you compete? How close do you compete to Orangeburg? 
we're gonna be in um, we're gonna be in Colombia. Um, um, I think it's uh, January the 11th. We open up in um, for the new year. We open up January the 11th in Columbia at uh, University of South Carolina. And uh, let me look at this date so I can give you the second date. And if 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 any of the parents or or, um, or uh, fans want, they can go onto our website, and our schedule is up there. But we're going to be in Colombia for three dates indoors, um, so we want them to come out and support us and come out and cheer for us. And and um, but we're going to be. Let's look at the schedule. So we're going to be in Colombia on January 11th um, and February 1st and February 22nd. So. We want the, the, all the South Carolina fans and, and um, followers to come out and see us and, and cheer for us and support the student athlete. Okay, okay. Well, well, Coach, tell me this. This is always, as a former coach, mm -hmm. you have that break at Christmas. How do, you, how do you navigate that with the students being away and not being able to run and maintain a conditioning program what do you do with them or, or what type of things do you set in place to try to encourage them to stay active and not to have to start all the way over when they come back? You know, I say this, Mickey, when you have student athletes that want to win and they believe in you, they're going to call you <laughs> if you don't give them a workout. But but for the most part, you know, they, they're going to do um, what they need to do and they're going to call me and, and tell me how it's going for the for the three weeks that they're at home. You know, we we have a plan and we develop a workout for them. So when they go home, most of them, I would say a good 99% of the student athletes, they they work out. They don't they don't want to lose what they had going on before they leave. So they um, they stay working out. They call me and um, um, text me. You know, anything, any changes or any disruption in the workout plan. But for the most part, they 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 work out when they go home. Ladies and gentlemen, please pay, take note that what Coach Watts is telling you is the exception and not the rule. Most of us almost have to stay on our, our student athletes to keep working during that time. And, and a lot of us had to schedule competitions and bring them back early and try to get them back in, in, in game shape again. But if he's telling you that, I mean, he's telling you the truth, but if he's telling you that, that's an exception to the rule. And congratulations to you and your staff for being able to instill that in your student athletes. Yeah, we 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 have a culture here where, you know, the student athletes, they understand. And and um they're the one that wanted, you know, it's different when the coach wanted more than the student athlete. Oh, but yeah. I have students on this team that wanted more than me. So they call me and say, Coach, we need to work out. <laughs> I don't need, you know. <laughs> so when you have that, then you know you have a, a, a championship mindset um, team. Coach, I, I love that what you were saying about having it, wanting it more than the coach. I mean, that's so therefore you, you don't have that to worry about. Right, right. And coach, with the accolades that your student athletes have done, please kind of enlighten us a little bit about some of the successes you've had academically with this program. You know, last year, um, the men and women team with NCAA All-American on the academic side, and that's big, right? Um, because you're talking about both our teams with over a 3 um, I think our average team GPA was a 3-4 um, last year. Um, the, in, in those, the men with the um, CIAA um, highest GPA, um, team with the highest GPA, and out there, the women with the award. So we had a lot of great success, not just on the track, but just to show we have success in the classroom as well. Coach, that's big time success right there. That's why I wanted to make sure that we gave it the attention that it deserves because, one, Claflin is an academic institution, and we always talk about it. You know, if your students aren't academically sound, they're not going to last at Claflin. They might be home before the week is out. Right, right. Claflin is an academic school, and, and the coaching staff kind of stays on them to make sure that they have whatever they need academically to be successful. That's right. And, um, and you know, me being a, a coach with also um, some – 
uh, academic, I used to be an academic advisor. So with that background, you know, of course I'm pushing my students to make sure that we do what we need, what we need to do academically, because that's important. You can't run forever. Um, but, you know, so we have to make sure that we, we are a productive member of society once we leave and you graduate class. And we want to make sure you out there and you helping to contribute to society. Uh, absolutely. Coach, for people who have student athletes or coaches, how do they get in touch with you about potential student athletes um, that might be interested in your program? They can reach out to me. They can they can call me. Um, or matter of fact, I think it's easier if they email me. My email address is m-a-w-a-t-t-s at claflin.edu. So that's the best way to get in touch with me. Um, I'll respond to your email. Um, just if you have student athletes, potential student athletes that's interested in Claflin, um, just uh, shoot me an email. Ah, Coach, what are you looking for as a season, you know, for, for your new crew coming in? Um, it's hard to, to specifically say because I'm always recruiting. I'm recruiting in every area. You know, we, if we can be successful in one area, we'll be successful in another. You know, track and field, it's a lot of things that are going on, a lot of components. So if you have any any student athlete that you feel that can be um, a potential uh, Claflin student, then, you know, just reach out to me. It doesn't matter what area, you know, I'll make that decision um, on, on the area that we have need. But we always have a need for student athletes that's going to help us get better. Uh, absolutely. Coach, as we wind this down, is there anything you'd like to say to all the fans, student supporters, administration, and alumni out there, anything you'd like to say in closing for this segment with Cross Country? Yes, yes. Um, um, uh, your support is greatly appreciated. Um, just uh, make sure um, with the administration here, with the student and athlete, you know, we always uh, come out and watch us, you know, um, um, if, if you can. And uh, continue to be, be as supportive as you can to the program. And we're going to continue to grow and make you proud um, of being a Claflin alumni or, or a donor, whatever it is, we're going to make you proud. And those are true words. They, they took a quantum leap, and now he's kind of, he's putting that bullseye on Claflin, just like some of the other programs. We keep talking to coaches, you know, CIAA has this thing about Claflin. You know, you coming in looking like you're trying to take over. So <laughs> they got their eyes on all the programs at Claflin now. Now we try to make our way to the top. So we're going to keep climbing. We're going to keep climbing up that ladder to try to make our way to the top. But our goal is always to get better. Well, Kat, congratulations, Coach Watson. Once again, we appreciate you rearranging your schedule so we can get you in early uh, before the homecoming rush comes in. But right. we want to be able to reach out and, and celebrate with you. Well, we appreciate you and everything that you're doing. And I'm pretty sure all the student athletes feel the same way. Ladies and gentlemen, there you have it from Coach Watts with the success that the cross-country team, men and women, had. Now, you know, the men have always been pretty good, not this good, but the women have really jumped in leaps and bounds. And Coach Watts told you they were going to surprise us this year, and he really kept his word. Thank you, Coach. We appreciate you being here. All right. Thank you. Appreciate everything that you're doing.